Hi everyone who is watching my channel. Today we are going to discuss which food is better for humans, meat or plant-based food. There are several basic types of nutrition in the world which we will look at in more detail. Traditional nutrition involves eating both plant and animal foods in raw and processed forms. Vegetarianism, on the other hand, means avoiding meat, fish, poultry, and any other animal products. Veganism is an even more modernized version that involves the complete avoidance of animal products including eggs, dairy products, and even honey. There is also raw foodism, in which a person eats only fresh fruits, vegetables, nuts, fruits, and berries. The main purpose of nutrition is to provide the body with energy and to enjoy food. The food pyramid is as follows. The main source is solar energy. However, we cannot consume it directly. So we use plants that convert it into organic form with the help of sunlight and inorganic micronutrients. Herbivorous animals then consume these plants and micronutrients in their food. Predators in turn eat the flesh of animals to get these same trace elements that the plants have synthesized. However, why do we need to stay on the edge of this food chain if we can get the micronutrients we need by skipping one link? Since childhood, we are indoctrinated that animal protein is an integral part of an active physical lifestyle that it is impossible to fully exist without it. Let's remember the biology lessons from elementary school. Protein is the basis of life, and it turns out that plants and fruits also contain protein. It is a unique sequence of amino acids, and each protein is unique. The animal protein found in chicken or veal is much different than the protein that makes up the human body. Protein is not a staple food for us, as our bodies are made up of cells that require amino acids for full life and repair. They are divided into two categories, essential and substituted. Indispensable amino acids are synthesized inside the body with the help of our own microflora, while we get the substituted amino acids from food. There is some difference between animal and plant protein, which is the length of the amino acid chain and the number of amino acids. Animal protein contains more amino acids than plant protein. So many people believe that animal protein is more necessary and beneficial than plant protein. However, animal protein poses a problem because our bodies cannot fully break down such long amino acid sequences with their enzymes. Animal protein is not digested by us, whereas plant protein has a shorter chain and can be fully digested. To get the right amount of amino acids for the body, we can consume different plants, not just a piece of meat. It is worth imagining a piece of bloody beef or chicken meat. It will probably not cause appetite and salivation. Now imagine a slice of pineapple. I'm sure you're already salivating. There are many flavor additives used today that greatly distort the flavor of the product and allow you to get more of that product. We are talking about salt, sugar, spices and chemical additives used in the industry. Let's do an experiment. Try eating foods without flavor enhancers for a couple of days, and you will find out what your body likes. You realize we don't know what meat tastes like. The heat treatment of meat completely kills everything useful and necessary. Have you ever wondered why a temperature of 45 degrees is critical for humans? That's the temperature at which protein folds. The same thing happens to animal meat. And at 70 degrees, the protein denatures completely. Imagine a delicious kebab. What's good in it? What happens to the animal protein we eat? Our body tries to dismantle the already dead product, as heat treatment almost completely destroys protein compounds, kills everything useful. Further, meat not digested to the end settles on the walls of our intestines, forms fecal stones, and contaminates our body, being an excellent breeding ground for pathogenic microflora, and prevents our lymph from excreting waste. That's why the body gets sick. Who decided that our ancestors ate meat? Imagine those distant times, when in primitive times people without fire technology weapons hunted. How much effort they spent in order to kill a boar, a deer, or even an elephant. Doesn't that seem a little unreasonable to you? It is easier to reach out and pick a plant. Nowadays the situation is changing and the amount of meat products consumed is increasing. So there are a lot of tasty spices, flavorings, and taste additives everywhere. Let's look at the main differences between carnivores and herbivores and humans. Humans have mobile jaws. Predators do not chew. Predators have a fully acidic stomach that allows them to break down any flesh with the help of enzymes. In humans, the stomach is an organ that helps us destroy bacteria and parasites. The length of the intestines in a predator is much shorter than any herbivorous creature, including humans. It is more difficult for uneaten food to exit through the long intestine. So what happens when we consume animal food? One is we kill it in the cooking stage. 
Two, we can't break it down completely. The third is that we feed pathogenic microflora, which partially saves us from protein intoxication, but clogs our body with the products of its vital activity. Fourthly, we clog the intestinal walls with animal remains, preventing the lymphatic system to remove slags. What happens when we consume fresh plant food? One, we don't kill it at the cooking stage. Two, we have enough enzymes to break it down. Three, it takes itself apart. Plant foods have specific bacteria and enzymes that help our bodies break it down. And fourthly, fully broken down food doesn't clog our gut, it doesn't clog our lymphatic system. So are we herbivores or carnivores? It's not like that. Look for yourself, as nature wisely intended. There's a tree that bears fruit. The center of the tree is a stone, but it's not good for us to eat. But the surrounding pulp contains a lot of microelements, vitamins, and can satiate us. So the fruit ripens, falls to the ground to feed other living beings, and the future tree can germinate. The circle is closed. No one needs to die for you to live a long and healthy life. If you like this film, put a thumbs up. Be sure to subscribe to the channel and put a bell not to miss new films.